Don't get it, Albert. It's been two hours, and there ain't nothing happened. It will. It has to. It must. What is it with you? You ain't moved a step from that spot since you got here. Be on your guard. Whatever is going to happen will happen soon. What? What's happening? Nothing. Not a thing. You can, you can go back to sleep if you like. All's quiet. Who's that answer talking? Just me. Why is you always talking to yourself? Bad habit, ma'am. I was just think better when I talk out loud. But I thought I said someone answer you. Huh? But, um, I was, uh, I don't know, ma'am. Could be you some um, dream that part. Filled in the blanks yourself. I don't know. Tell me what you was talking to yourself about. Oh, that wells, ma'am. I just get a feeling sometimes, like tonight. There's something in the air here. Something just ain't right. I can feel it in my bones. I can smell it. Maybe you is just smelling yourself. When's the last time you had a bath? <laughs> Uh, he's, um, he's got a point. Not like there's a whole lot of water around here, though. You can say that again. All this heat and all your fur don't make you none too fun to be around. Dogs ain't all skin and bones neither, ma'am. Huh! If I wasn't so dog tired, maybe I'd get up and slap you. But this air is something foul. Something about it is draining me. Why don't you sit down? All you're buzzing about ain't making things any easier. You're just making me all nervous. If something is going to happen, you might as well sit and let it. It will happen whether you're just sitting or standing. That is true enough. I just hope you is right this time. Tell me a story. Ma'am? You said me a story. Tell me one. I um, a story? You, ma'am? <laughs> What's so funny about a story? Nothing, ma'am. Not a darn thing. It's just that, well, Usually, you don't want me to say nothing. Well, now it's you. 
Now I want a star. You just got one or not. Sure, sure I do. I's always got time for a story for one who's willing to listen. Now let's see. In this one there was a time and a place. Nothing like where we is now. It wasn't so hot. It wasn't so light. It wasn't so empty. It was cold. It was dark. It was filled with people. I think I'm gonna like this star. I hope so, ma'am. I hope so. Once upon a time, in a far-off country, there lived a little orphan girl who sold matches. It was Christmas Eve, and everyone was much too busy to pay any attention to her. All the other children had warm clothes to wear, warm homes to live in, and fine Christmas dinners waiting on their tables. But the poor little match girl had none of these. If she didn't sell her matches, she wouldn't even have enough money for a bite of food or for the simplest shelter on this bitter cold night. Inside the big houses, there were Christmas stockings just waiting to be filled by Santa Claus. But what would Santa have for a poor little match girl? For her, a Christmas present was only something to dream about. If only she could get warm, that would be enough of a gift. She lit one of her precious matches. It gave off a pleasant warmth. But somehow, the light seemed strange. Was she just imagining? Or was it really? Yes, it really was. Santa Claus. Santa nodded to her and said, Come, I have something for you. Oh, how lovely. A warm fur cloak. Her very first Christmas present. But that was only the beginning. For now Santa led her into his magic kingdom, where there were sights that no other child had ever seen. It was very mysterious there. The ice men were so solemn. But somehow, even in this cold land, she felt warm. Santa made some funny motions and, presto, instead of his plain sack, there was a beautiful throne. And as she sat down, the little match girl felt as proud as a princess. So many surprises, she thought. I wonder what's going to happen next. Just then, Santa started banging on his little kettle. Let's have some entertainment, he cried. such a lovely dream.
Now that the dance was over, a very strange thing happened. Everyone began to disappear. It was most peculiar. But at least Santa was still here. Then the cloak slipped from her shoulders. Although the little match girl didn't realize it, her match had gone out. All that remained now was the cold snow and the memory of Santa and her first Christmas present. Quickly, she lit another match. Perhaps she would see something wonderful again. Slowly, as if from a great distance, a Christmas tree appeared, bigger and more beautifully decorated than any she had ever seen. Underneath the tree were the loveliest dolls, just like those she had seen in the windows of the most expensive toy shop. Oh, how she had wanted just one for her very own. When she looked up at the tree again, a lady appeared. A lady who looked like her lost mother. Was it really she, so gentle, so radiant, Truly, her match must be magic, for now it made the candles sparkle, and beneath its glittering light, lo and behold, the toys came to life. it had been, but now it was all over. Slowly, the dolls and the beautiful lady began to fade away. Again, all that remained of a dream was a burned out match. Please come back, she cried. Please don't vanish like Santa Claus and the beautiful Christmas tree. found her mother again, and now the little match girl would be warm and happy forever. That's right, ma'am. I think I know how she felt. Whatever became of her? Don't tell her, Bunsen. I don't know anything yet. What's going on is affecting more than things here. It's affecting things everywhere. In times other than this, Allison is about to die, unless you can change it. I don't know how. I don't know why, but I know that much. So keep her resting. Keep her mind off of things. Keep her mind off her baby. Just don't tell her about the little match girl. She, uh, she found a mother. Oh, that's nice. At least there are some happy endings. Do you know a story from the Bible, the Christmas star? Yes, ma'am. Indeed, I do. That 
Sure thing, ma'am. Sure thing. about baby Jesus and a little lamb who for one night was the most important little lamb in the whole wide world. Yes. 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 A long time ago, nearly 2,000 years ago, in fact, in the hills of Judea, just outside the little town of Bethlehem, on one cold, storm-laden night, we find three shepherds, very important to our story. Sheep have devils in them tonight. A dozen times had the storm scattered them. They are all safe now, Razor. Uh, all except one lamb. Well, aren't you going to look for him? I have looked for him. Look for him till I'm worn out. That one lamb has run away more times than all the others put together. Then I will go. I will help you. Then you are both fools. He's frightened, Uncle Asa, and miserable. He may be hurt. I can't leave him like that. Ah. We'll be back as soon as we find him. Come, my son. Listen! There he is! Help me, Father. thou shalt know him. Thou wilt find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. What is it? Where is it me? We must tell Asa of this. An angel appeared to us, and he said, Christ the King is born. What? The storm must have battled thy brain. Hearest thou this drivel thy son uttered? But Asa, what the boy saith is true. I too saw the angel and heard him speak. You can see what good it did to search for that lamb. Already he's running away again. I'll take care of him, Uncle Asa. Thou needst have no concern. We must look for the Christ child. And we shall find him lying in a manger. That must mean that he's in a stable. And why should a king be born in a stable? 
Answer me that. Perhaps we shall know that when we find him. Wilt thou come with us, Azor? Yea, I will go with thee. Wait! Wilt thou take the lamb? I'll be responsible for him, Uncle Asa. What new madness is this? Put that lamb down and leave him. Let the boy alone, Asa. What harm can it do? And, carrying the little lamb with them, Reuben, Benjamin, and Asa struggled through the hills on this very holy night. Hours later, they approached the little town of Bethlehem. Cold, crowded, wonderful Bethlehem lying before them in the night. Who art thou? What seek ye? We come seeking Christ the King. Why well, think ye he is here? An angel told us he is born. Is he here? My name is Joseph, and this is Mary, my wife. I heard thee speaking outside. Thou art welcome. My Lord and my God. Please, the lamb would keep him warm. The lamb, from which I had no care is of the greatest importance. Oh, Lord, I did not know. Forgive me. See nothing. Now ah, he is here. It's um just the wind. Ah, we are not here. We are like that before. Sandstorms. Come not like that. That's not natural. What 
that what what is that we're seeing I think it's some kind of portal I think I see mama empty and jingles on the other side of it is mama empty is she ringing Orba's neck Something is coming through the portal. The portal is gone. This lady is pregnant. Very, very pregnant. Is she okay? She seems to be groggy, but okay. We need to get her and Bunsen to a hospital, though. What about Bunsen? How is he, Jenny? Un Unconscious. Bruised but alive, as I. Looks like something knocked him about pretty badly. He needs a doctor right now. Already on it, Jenny. The ambulance is on its way! Good, Sylvester. Good. I'll not leave you, my little bambino. Not ever again. I don't know where you've been all this time, but one thing's for certain. I'll never let you leave me again. Is he gone? He's gone. Where? Where he's supposed to be. In time. To begin his descent into the Orville will know he'll become. How? Oh, one minute I saw your hands around his neck. The next minute there was a boom and he was gone. You heard that last sonic boom, did you? Yeah, so? Well, within that boom was a small portal. I was the only one who could see it. I threw young Orville into it. You threw your own son into a portal going who knows where? I had to. He was too dangerous to leave here. He was good-natured, 
but he was still my son, smart, with the wisdom of the cosmos at his disposal. He would have caused even more trouble eventually, far worse than this. He had to go. I saw a chance to send him on his way. I took it. I'm kind of sorry to see him go. I know that he was still Orville, but he was so much better than the older version we had come to know and despise. As you say, however, he was a danger. At least now we'll have a little more peace around here. Or not. Excuse me for a moment, Jingles. Where are you going, Mama MP? To see if there are any more portals laying around the house. There's one more person I'd like to throw into one. <laughs> <laughs>